Chris the Nightmare Ariola, and you're watching Mission Boxing Today on YouTube. Heavyweight boxing fans, what's the deal? All right, man, so yesterday the news came out that Huey Fury has a injury, okay? Um, now, the, now, at first, when the news first broke out, the only information that they released to the fans on boxing scene, um, in the article according to boxing scene, it was something about plane ticket arrangements and accommodations, first class or... Whatever, some shit that just makes no sense at all uh, or that you would think would be enough not to show up for your world heavyweight title shot and over a million dollar purse. OK, um, so I tried to give it's not even that I tried to give. I just tried to let some time go by, sleep on it and see if the Fury clan would say something. I mean, give us something, man. I mean, and this is the reason why I don't believe the injury. They haven't came out to say anything, not on Twitter, not on Instagram. I tried to look up Hennessy Sports, nothing. Peter Fury's Twitter, nothing. Huey Fury's, tw uh, Huey Fury's Twitter, nothing. Um, yesterday, somebody sent me a link to some guy that's a part of their clan. Look, no disrespect, man, to the viewers and people that send me links. But in a situation like this, I don't want to listen to I, I don't want to hear any hanger on of the camp talk. I want to hear the promoter the fighter or his trainer, which is his father too. That's all I want to hear from. I don't want to hear from the guy that's in the gym, you know, that that, that opens the gym. I don't want to hear from him. Not to say that he's not an important part of their team when they're training, but I don't want to hear from him. I, I want to hear from the, the promoter, the fighter, or the trainer. Haven't heard from any of them. You know what I mean? They're just so, this right here lets me know, because if it was something wrong, they would say, hey man, he broke his hand or he broke his foot or he tore something in his knee. It'd be something, you know what I mean? But we haven't heard anything. And the news of the injury came like an hour after the initial news that he wasn't going to, uh, you know, that the fight was off because of, you know, plane ticket accommodations or whatever, whatever dumbass excuse that was. All right. So I really didn't get to go all the way into how I feel and what I think Joseph Parker should do. All right. Um, the promoter of Joseph Parker, he does not believe Huey Fury is injured. Let me just read some of the stuff that he had to say. He says, uh, oh, let me see here. All right, Dave Higgins said he is shocked with the sudden turn of events and does not believe Huey Fury is injured. He says, do I think Huey is injured? No. No, I don't. I think it's make-believe, Higgins told the New Zealand Herald. All right, he also went on to say, we want to do the right thing by paying... By the paying public, we need to show them respect, and we will. We as a company need to regroup and make different arrangements, and we hope to do that by tomorrow morning, okay? Um, so, and I also read something, let me see, there was something, maybe this isn't the article, but in that article I seen, they were saying that they can fight somebody in the top 50, it said 50. I don't know if they meant 15 or, but it said 50. I'm trying to, let me see. This is not the article, man, but. All right, so I found the article. Um, it was a different article in Boxing Scene. I'll, I'll leave all these articles in the description box if you guys haven't had a chance to um, read these articles yet, okay? But on this one, he says, yeah, this is when they were talking about um, Duco will now attempt to secure a late replacement to face Parker on the card. If they are unable to find a suitable opponent, the entire event could very well get canceled with Parker's return being pushed back to a later date. Okay, now this is what Dave Higgins had to say. He says, I spoke to the WBO president a minute ago, and he said the Furies are claiming to have an injury, and therefore we can fight whoever we want, when we want, as a voluntary defense out of the top 50. Duco co-owner David Higgins said to Fairfax Media. Okay, um, then he also went on to say, I know exactly what it is. Their moral compass has been broken in half. A nasty fracture of the moral compass. It's not just Huey. The whole camp has. That's boxing. Sometimes this sort of thing goes on. They didn't appear to want to come to New Zealand, Higgins said. And, you know, a lot of people are telling me, Mr. Boxing, why are you, you know, being soft on the Furies? Uh, we were telling you months ago that this fight wasn't going to happen. What you guys got to realize is this. And, hey, I... I was wrong. You guys were right that said this fight wouldn't happen. I was wrong. It's easy for me to say that I'm wrong. But one thing I'll say is this. If I go by all the fans, when you guys tell me a fight isn't going to happen, no fight will happen then. 
people, I remember when the Klitschko, this off subject just for a second, but when Klitschko and Joshua was first being talked about, remember it, it was being talked about before the Molina fight. Remember it was before Molina and people were saying, there's no way Eddie Hearn would put Joshua in the ring with Klitschko. Not right now in December, not a few months from now. It will never, ever, ever, ever happen. And the fight's going to happen within a week. Fingers crossed, please. Let me knock on wood, please, please. I hope that one doesn't get canceled. But so if I always just go by what you guys are telling me that fights are going to happen, then no fight will happen. But sometimes you guys are right, man. And again, I guess I'm just a wishful thinker because I want these fights to happen. When fights like this get made, um, not to say that I thought that Huey Fury should have been the mandatory. If you guys remember, I was looking at the rankings, scratching my head like, man, why don't the WBO just make Huey Fury versus Jarrell Miller? At that time, they were the top two available opponents um, in those rankings of, from a few months back. And for whatever reason, they just put Huey Fury as the mandatory. All right. I know that David Hay was ranked number one. Then he just decided to go the bail you route. But when fights are put together, man, I like, you know, I like I want them to happen. You know, I just never had that attitude of oh, that fight's not going to happen. I just don't have that. Uh, maybe I should do it. But usually the fights do happen, man, unless somebody gets injured. But I don't know if this uh, injury claim is true or not. Being that they haven't came out and said anything to us, nothing. They just haven't said nothing. They're just chilling like the fans just like, you know, we should wait on them or something like, I don't know, man. But um, <clears throat> so now what should Joseph Parker do now? Here it says a voluntary defense out of the top 50. Now, when they say out of the top 50, are they talking about just overall like box wrecks top 50 or is it the WBO? So I went to the WBO website and for what I've seen, the the highest they go is just up to the top 15. <clears throat> so I don't, I don't know if there's an option on their website to look past the top 15. I, I'm not sure, but he said the top 50. Okay. So I'm trying to look, I don't see, you know, again, I don't know what they're talking about with that. As far as, is it like a box rec top 50 or the WBO? But you look at the WBO, their top 15 for at least. Okay. The number 15, Zhili Zhang. Um, hmm. Wouldn't want to see that one. I'm going to be honest with you, I wouldn't want to see Zhili Zhang. I've heard of Zhili Zhang, uh, but I just wouldn't want to see that. Uh, Razvan Kajono, I know Parker spars him a lot. He's he's always in Parker's camps sparring when he's down in Vegas. Uh, I wouldn't want to see that. I, I know it's a late replacement. You got to find the best suitable opponent. I'm just going to be honest with you guys, though. Uh, Kaya Toro Fujimoto, number 13. Don't want to see that. Um, Ajay Kabayel, <clears throat> he's a good you know, German prospect, young guy, just picked up the EBU title. I don't want to see him. Andre Fedosov, don't want to see him. All right. Uh, although Fedosov, his style, the way he style, the way he fights stylistically, it will probably be entertaining because he comes forward. Um, if you guys looked at his style, you would you, trust me. You would say, hey, man, this would probably be entertaining. Although, you know, some of you probably don't know who he is, but but I don't want to see him in this fight. OK, Luis Ortiz, number 10. <clears throat> of course, I want to see this one. <laughs> of course. But Luis Ortiz was supposed to fight last night on the uh <clears throat> on the Porter versus Berto undercard and he injured his hand he came out with an injury like a week ago that he ruined his hand so I'm not sure and a lot of people didn't even believe that they thought that that was a lie they thought that he just didn't want to fight Derek Rossi so but I don't know if he's really injured will he be ready in less than two weeks here I, I don't know um number nine Adrian Rodinko uh, no, don't want to see that. Um, Bradinko, he will come forward and, you know, I just don't want to see that. You know, Tom Schwartz, number eight, young guy, prospect. I don't want to see that. Dillian White, number seven. I would love to see it. Dillian White has a fight coming up already scheduled for in June against, um, uh, Marius Wach, you know, um, that post the headline, the O2 June 3rd. So I'm not sure if that's even possible. Dominic Brazil. Now, Brazil just fought February 25th, beat Israel Gono, one of Parker's uh, training partners and friends, close friends. Is it possible? It's just, are some of these possible? Can they do a quick turnaround like this? This is why, before I get to the other guys, this is why I like when fighters stay ready so they won't have to get ready. You know what I mean? For opportunities like this, you never know when an opportunity can pop up for you. Even if you're not, you don't have a fight scheduled or something. Just staying ready, staying ready. I love when fighters do it. Um, so I guess we'll see who has been staying ready and who can they get that's a good uh, opponent. Number five, Kirbat Pulev. Pulev has a fight coming up with Kevin Johnson. 
Pulev seems as if he's just going to sit it out and wait for his IBF title shot. Although if this were to arise, this is the title shot. Take this one, right? You know, but I know he has a fight coming up with Kevin Johnson. Um, Andrew Ruiz Jr. Haven't heard from Andy in a minute. Him and Parker fought a good fight the first time. Last I heard from Andy was after the fight with Parker. He said he's going to be back in the gym in the middle of January up in Big Bear. Last I heard from Andy. You know, so I'm not sure. Jarrell Big Baby Miller, number three. He stays in the gym. He seems like he stays ready. He was pissed off when um, Fury, when Huey Fury got the nod to get the fight. He was kind of, you know, displeased by that. Would Jarrell Miller be ready in 13 days to go over there and fight? You know, um, what kind of money? Were they all from the same money? Will he get that million, that million dollar paycheck? Would he go over there? Christian Hammer's number two. And then you got Fury, uh, Huey Fury, number one. Christian Hammer, number two, the WBO European champion. I mean, that's possible. You know, and Christian Hammer, although he's not a world beater, I know a lot of people say, who the hell is Christian Hammer? But if you really follow the division, like the top 100, Christian Hammer did have two good victories, man. Uh, he he knocked off David Price and he beat Erkin Tepper, gave Erkin Tepper his first loss. You know what I mean? So to me, to me as a fan, those are two solid victories. And if you throw in that Michael Sprott knockout, all those are old Michael Sprott. But um, it was impressive because he knocked Sprott completely out. You know what I mean? And, you know, Hammer's been in there, you know, with Marius Wack and Tyson Fury. You know, he's been in there with his fair share of tough competition, too. And he's highly rated. You know, I I didn't make the rankings up, man. He's number two by uh, the WBO. So pretty much, man, anybody from 10 up, I wouldn't be uh, mad about. Although there are some in there is kind of like, uh, I don't want to see. But Christian Hammer, I think Christian Hammer would be ready. Just the way he rolls, man, it seemed like Hammer would take the fight early. You know, he seems like he would be the most willing but I'm not sure, man. They're talking about the top 50. So if I look outside of this top 15, Derek Rossi was a guy that's in shape right now. He still wants to fight Luis Ortiz. I've actually seen him say Ortiz should just reschedule the fight. I know he stays in shape. Another person is not rated in their top 15. I believe he's rated highly by the WBA. Manuel Char, right? Manuel Char got into it with uh, Tyson Fury at some expo. It was look kind of staged, though. And... Uh, Manuel Char stays in shape. Is he a world beater? No, but he stays in shape. I know he'll be ready to fight. You know, he's not the perfect fighter. You know, I know he got knocked out by Marius Breedis and lost a decision to uh, Johan Duopa, and he got knocked out by Pavekin. Um, got stopped by Vit Vitaly Klitschko, too, but he's won his last two fights, and he's highly rated by the WB. I know it's a different sanction of body, but I'm just trying to be as, you know, just trying to throw some names out there, but now, with all that out the way, with with all that out the way, if you're asking me who, if it was in my decision, shit, man, is Deontay Wilder ready to fight right now? Let's throw Wilder out there, you know, but I'm not sure how possible that is. Maybe they can just scrap this May 6th date and just, let's just get a fight lined up with Wilder and Parker. That's what I would want. You know what I mean? Um, it's just scrap this date completely. I know the New Zealand fans and the, the fans out there that are looking to see Joseph Parker fight on May 6th, that bought tickets and all that, I know they will be, you know, displeased by it. But, you know, unless he takes on, like I said, like a manual charge just to fill in that date, just to get one more fight underneath his belt. And, you know, he goes in there to take care of the business and doesn't get injured. And then let's just get the, the uh, Wilder fight. And I know Wilder's going to show up at the, at the uh, <clears throat> Anthony Joshua Klitschko fight next weekend. He's going to be ringside. So I would assume he steps in the ring and possibly tries to call out the winner. Um, a lot of people are saying that, no, they think Dillian White's going to enter the ring. But Dillian White has a fight already scheduled with Marius Wack. So I assume he's just going to go that route. Um, I know St Stavern, he keeps. And the other day, man, you guys didn't catch the video. Um, I was watching a, uh, a Baylor Red TV interview a live interview he was having facetime with uh Stavern, and i just asked the question live like hey man are you fighting wilder this is like two days ago and he said yes all right he did he seem he didn't seem all that confident when he said it but he said yes and if you go look at his instagram just as of yesterday he keeps posting uh videos and pictures of him training and under his post he you know he'll leave a message saying uh you know Stavern wilder uh, or hashtag Stavern versus Wilder too. Like he's always putting it up there, man. So with him 
it's just hard to just not listen to Stavern because when Stavern was saying that uh, he's when they when they said he didn't have to fight Pavekin and Stavern was telling us that he's going to fight Wilder, I was like, dude, there's no way the WBC said that they're going to make you earn it first and you're going to have to fight <clears throat> in a in, you know in an interim fight. And he kept telling us that he's not going to have to, and I didn't listen to him. The next day, you know, boom, the WBC <laughs> ordered a uh, you know order for Team Wilder and Stavern to come to an agreement. They still haven't came to an agreement. I remember the WBC saying that, uh, you know, they'll have 30 days to do it. It's been damn near like 50 days now. But then when I listened to that interview with Stavern on Baylor Rick, he said that it was going to be between 90 and 120 days. So, man, I don't want to see fucking Wilder sitting out three, four months just to negotiate with Stavern, somebody who he beat cleanly and clear in the first fight. I don't want to see that recycle fight, man. Um, so regardless of what Stavern says and what he posts on Instagram, I respect him, but I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that, man. Um, Stavern needs to fight like Andy Ruiz Jr. or somebody like that. Uh, Gerald Washington or something, man. Um, and I think Parker and Wilder need to go ahead and start these negotiations right now. Let's just get it out the way with, man. Let's go ahead and get it out the way with. Because right now, if you look at the WBO rankings, there's really no clear-cut number one contender. You, you know what I'm saying? Even in the WBC... I know uh, Ortiz, well, Ortiz is number one for the WBA, and he's highly rated by the WBC. But really, it's just the time is right, man. I think the time is right. You know, Wilder, he, he needs that marquee victory. He needs that marquee fight. That's why a lot of fans want to see him fight Ortiz, Parker, the one out of Klitschko and Joshua. And Parker seems like the type that's willing to take on any challenge. They've talked about wanting to fight Wilder months ago. And like I said, when that time arrives to where they can make the fight and there seems like there's nothing in the way right now, again, unless you're looking at Stavern and his so-called mandatory spot he's going against, against he's going to get against Wilder, maybe they could pay him some step aside money that he can't refuse. You know, money talks, man. Fighters say a lot, but money talks. <laughs> money talks and bullshit walks a million miles. So uh, maybe they could pay him some step aside money, man, but. Right now, we need to make that happen. Ortiz supposedly has a hand injury and he's out. Wilder, Parker, let's start negotiating. You know what I mean? Let's just go ahead and start negotiating this fight, man. What are we waiting on? You know, like I said, the WBO, there's no clear-cut challenger for that title with that uh, in that sanction about it, if you ask me. I know Christian Hammer is up next, and he does have two good victories. You know what I mean? Then you got Jarrell Miller rated. So, hey, man. I want to see Parker versus Wilder. I want this to get underway. Will it happen May 6th in 13 days notice? If it could, great. You know, if, if look, just like when Wilder needed a, re a replacement and uh, what was his name? Andres Warzik popped or he got, he failed his test, tested positive for, I forgot what he tested positive for, but, and right after that, they need a replacement quick. I think it was like a month until fight day. And my thing is, man, if whoever steps up and say that they can fight and it's a name, shit, throw them in there. I know people, fans get on, oh, you got to promote the fight and this and that. I guess you can, man, but I'm just so thirsty for big fights at heavyweight, man. I want to see Parker versus Wilder. So if, look, if Wilder raised his hand and said, look, I'll fight you, let that happen. You know what I mean? Will it happen? I won't put my money on it, but... I would like to see Parker, if he doesn't want to fight May 6th against somebody of note, one of the guys that I named, um, even Brian Jennings. Brian Jennings is another good name, man. You know, I know he hasn't fought in a while, but shit, as a 13-day replacement, Jennings stays in the gym. Go to his Instagram account if you don't believe me. The dude's still 220 pounds, uh, excellent shape, you know what I mean? Just go take a look yourself. I don't have to talk him up. Just go look yourself, man. He's only lost to Ortiz and Klitschko. You know, he went 12 rounds with Klitschko. He got stopped by Ortiz. It was an entertaining fight. You know what I mean? Um, if they're looking for that type of challenge, there's good guys out there. But I don't want to see him fight uh, Razvan Jacono Or, you know, I just, I don't want to see. I know it's, it's last minute, man, but I don't want to see that, man. I'm just going to be honest with you. Just like I, I didn't want to see Wilder against Andre Warzik. You know what I mean? I don't want to see him take on somebody like that. Uh Ah, man, this is just bad news from the Fury camp, man. And with the Furies, man, you know, I'm just tired of the talking. I'm tired of the talking, man. You know, Huey Fury, they keep saying how everybody doesn't want to fight them. I know him and Wilder has something going on. 
before a while ago was like a year or two ago where he was trying to fight Wilder. And then I guess he said that Wilder didn't give him enough time to train for the fight. Then I seen Huey Fury turn down Dillian White. Was it like last year when they were talking about that? And he said that him and White are, they're like friends. It's like, what? You, I mean, it's bad enough you already got a cousin that fights. And uh, you talking about somebody else is your friend? It's like, uh, man, there really ain't no friends when you're trying to be number one, man. You know what I mean? What do you fucking mean he's your friend? Like, y'all trying to become number one. And sometimes your friend might get in your way. You got to knock him off, man. Like, this is boxing. You know, like, I understand you don't fight your cousin. And he's one of, when he was active, at least, he was one of the top guys. You know, the top guy when he beat Klitschko, as far as, uh, you, you know, beating Klitschko. So, okay, you can't fight him because, you he, you know, he's your cousin. Now you're saying that White was your is your friend? Like, I guess, man. But, um... It's just too many excuses now. Now they're saying he's injured, although we haven't heard anything. And to me, once you haven't said something the day that you announced that, you know, or the, the day that the other promoter of the your opponent has to come out and tell us that you guys say he's injured. No, y'all need to come out and say something, man. And it's and because it took this long, I'm not even sure I'm even going to believe. I don't give a damn if they show him with he points a camera at his fucking broken hand and takes a picture of it. I still might not believe it. I might not think, I might think they put makeup on it or something, man. Like, you know, like they did with Huey Fury's ankle uh, when he twisted his ankle badly leading up to the uh, Klitschko rematch. People were saying they thought it was fake. It looked kind of swollen to me, though, but people thought they, he put purple makeup on it, you know what I mean, to kind of disguise it. But I don't know, man. The Furies, man, all talk right now, all talk. But you know what? The boxing game moves on. It's not going to wait for the fucking Furies. You know what I mean? The boxing boxing will move on, man. It will move on. It will move on. Trust me. You know what I mean? People didn't think the division was going to move on after the 90s, and it moved on. Um, I wouldn't say it was good as the 90s, but it will keep. It will continue to move on. It's not going to wait for nobody, man. Time doesn't wait for no man. So the Furies want to bullshit. I'm just going to turn my back on them for right now and look forward to Klitschko, Joshua, Parker has a situation now going on. Wilder, there's other heavyweights. Luis Ortiz, there's other things going on right now. Um, whole bunch of fighters, man. I can name a lot of heavyweights, but there's a lot going on right now. The Furies are on the back burner. You know what I mean? Until I see them in the ring, really not going to be excited. Now, you know, I felt that way about Tyson Fury, and now I'm starting to feel that way about Huey, man. Like, just a lot of talk. Just a lot of talk right now. The last time they bit somebody you know because you know <laughs> all talk no bite and the last time it was a bite was when fury beat klitschko and that was in november of 2015 you know and the fury you know huey man first they were saying that it was the uh trying to get his father a visa remember that was the big thing oh my father doesn't get a visa you know they were saying that he might not fight blah 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 first they denied him then they granted him a visa cool you know Supposed to be there 30 days. He wasn't there. They were saying they're going to be in New Zealand for, you know, 30 days prior to the fight. They wasn't there. 16-day mark, they wasn't there. And then the 14-day mark, he's injured. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> hey, man, I still want the Furies around, but they got to get serious, man. They got to get serious. And, you know, Huey looked like he was losing, uh, I ain't going to say losing weight, but he looked like he was in very good shape. I seen an interview like a few weeks ago, had on a nice suit and... Looked like he was ready to go, man. Skin looked clear. Looked like he was ready. You know what I mean? But hey, man, uh, I'm not sure, man. I'm 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 not sure what's going on. I don't feel like playing the guessing game. I just don't feel like doing that, man. To me, he's bullshitting. Uh, I don't know if he's nervous. I don't know if he has cold feet. But whatever it is, he don't want that work. And then they were trying to. I heard they were trying to move the fight out of New Zealand like a few days ago. It's like, man, what? Dude, just get, you know, and I, I even said in the video that maybe it's gamesmanship, but then, you know, I thought it was gamesmanship then, but then now I hear this. Nah, it's bullshit is what it is. You know what I mean? But damn, this video went long. So who do you guys think that uh, Parker should fight next, man? They send somebody in the top 50, but like I said, I don't want to see him fight some fucking journeyman, man. And I know it's short notice, but maybe Christian Hammer, Jarrell Miller, one of these higher rated guys are possibly ready to go right now. And if we can't get that, you know, I would expect like a Char or a Derek Rossi or somebody like that, man. You know, somebody that has some experience, a little bit cagey, probably not the best of records, but just a cagey 
fighter that's been in there with some other experienced guys, probably only lost to, you know, some of the top guys themselves. But you guys let me know, man, what you think about all this shit about Huey Fury, just the Fury camp in general. Tyson Fury being 400 pounds, talking shit about he's going to regain this and do this. And he just looks huge as ever. And then you got Huey Fury now, who seems like the, the quiet of the bunch. Um, and now he's pulling this. Hasn't came out, said nothing, man. I haven't heard nothing from the promoter, the fighter, or the trainer. I don't really want to hear anything from the hanger-ons of the camp. I just don't. I just don't want to hear what they have to say. You guys let me know what you think, man. I'm out.